Hello, I'm going to go over the Honors Chemistry Unit 2 Practice Test, Problems 9 through 15, starting with number 9, A. We're going to always write the given value, which is 9.6 meters, with the units of meters, and put that number over 1. Okay, that's our starting point. And because we're changing units for all of these, we're going to have our fraction. That's called a conversion factor. For this problem, we want centimeters on the top because that's what it's asking us to change it to. And meters, which we're given, go on the bottom. Okay, so centimeters on top, meters on the bottom. You guys can see meters on top and meters on the bottom cancel. And we need to know the relationship between centimeters and meters. If you don't remember, go back into the slides for chapter two and look up centimeters. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. So we're gonna take 9.6 and multiply it by 100. That means move the decimal two places to the right and we will get 960 centimeters. Okay, for B, we have 20.9 milliliters over one and we're trying to change that to liters. So liters go on top, milliliters go on the bottom. This is a different relationship, milliliters to liters. There are a thousand milliliters in one liter. And in this case, we're dividing by a thousand. So the decimal is gonna move to the left as the number gets smaller. So it's gonna move one, two, three places. So we're gonna end up with 0 0.0209 liters as our answer for B. C, we're starting with 543 grams and it wants us to change it to kilograms over here. So we're going to put kilograms up on top of our conversion factor. And the given units of grams go on the bottom. This is over one. That's just to remind us that this is on top of the fraction here. One kilogram means you have a thousand Grams, and we're doing the same math we did here. Decimal moves three places to the left. There is no decimal, but it's right there after the three. So we will end up with 0 0.543 kilograms. For D, we have 0.987 centimeters, and we want to change that to nanometers. There's a lot of ways that you can do this one. I'm going to do it the longer way that's actually... Um, harder to mess up. Okay, so this is the way if you're confused, we're just going to do the same unit conversions that we've been doing the whole time. So centimeters go on the bottom. And because it's nanometers, you might not know how many nanometers are in one centimeter. But I do know that there are 100 centimeters in one meter. Okay, and then we can go from meters. So we want meters to cancel two nanometers up top. So centimeter on top, centimeter on the bottom, meter on top, meter on the bottom. Um, how many nanometers are in one meter? The answer is a billion with a B. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I didn't really leave myself enough room. There's a billion nanometers in one meter. Two of those zeros can cancel. So if two of these cancel, that means seven zeros. So I'm going to move the decimal seven places to the right. So there would be one, two, three, and then if I'm going uh, four more would be a total of seven. So I have four zeros afterwards. So that's going to be nine, eight, seven with four zeros nanometers. That's our final answer for D. E asks us to convert 376 microliters two milliliters. So I'm going to do a similar process here. I have microliters on the bottom in one liter. Micro means a millionth. So I have a million. That's one with six zeros. Microliters in one liter. And microliters will cancel. I want liters to cancel and I want to change it to milliliters. How many milliliters are in a liter? We already answered that up here. There's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So these zeros on top 
and these three zeros on the bottom will cancel. And I'm dividing this by 1,000, move the decimal three places to the left, and you get 0.376, that's a decimal, um, milliliters as our answer. Okay. For F, we have 4.51 times 10 to the seventh nanometers, and we're trying to change that to centimeters. Okay, so we're going from nanometers to centimeters. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to leave it in scientific notation so I can just combine the exponents here. So nano, we said a billion already. 10 to the ninth power is a billion. There's that many nanometers in one meter. So it's just kind of a shorter way instead of writing all the zeros to put 10 to the ninth. So nanometers have canceled. Meters need to cancel. So one meter is how many centimeters? If you said 100, you're correct. But in scientific notation, 100 is 10 squared. So that's how many centimeters there are. Now meters have canceled. And to figure out our final answer, we're just going to worry about the tens and the exponents on 10. So 10 to the seventh times 10 to the second is 10 to the ninth power. 10 to the ninth power over 10 to the ninth power, because we have 10 to the ninth down here, is going to cancel out. So um, this plus this minus this it all cancels out and we just have 4.51 left over. 4.51 centimeters is my final answer. Okay, for G, we have 1.00 times 10 to the negative fifth kilometers. And I wanna change that to millimeters. Let's do the scientific notation again. So one kilometer is how many meters? There's a thousand. That's 10 to the third power meters in one kilometer. Kilometers cancel. And I'm trying to change that to millimeters. So I want the meter, the one meter to go away. How many millimeters? I believe we did that up top too. It's also a thousand. There's a thousand millimeters in one meter. So in this one, I have 10 to the negative fifth times 10 to the third times 10 to the third. And so we're gonna add all of these together. Three plus three, we can add in any order you want. Three plus three is six, minus five is one. So I'm gonna get 1.00, because this didn't change, times 10 to the first power. Okay, because we combine these exponents and we get first power. And on the bottom, we're only dividing by one, so that doesn't affect it at all. Now, what is one times 10 to the first power? That's just 10. So if you wanted to write 10, um, you could totally write 10 millimeters, and that would also be correct. Okay, H, the last one on number nine, 3.76 times 10 to the 10th millimoles over one, and we're trying to change that to kilomoles. So let's keep going with our scientific notation. For millimoles in one mole, it's same as millimeters, we have 10 to the third power. So milli means you have a thousandth, so I need a thousand of them to equal one of the bigger units. Okay, and then um, now I have moles because millimoles is canceled. So I want mole down here, and we're trying to change it to kilomoles. In one kilomole, there's 10 to the third, also a 1,000 um, moles. So I have this 3.76 is going to stay. Okay, and let's deal with the exponents here. So I have 10 to the 10th power times 1 times 1, so that just stays as 10 to the 10th. I'm dividing it by... 10 to the third times 10 to the third. So we're going to add, since these are being multiplied, we're going to add the exponents on the bottom. 10 to the 10th, 10 to the sixth, because um, we add the three plus the three. And now 10 minus six will be our final answer. 
and 10 minus 6 is to the fourth power, and that is kilomoles. Moles have canceled. Kilomoles. I'm actually going to rewrite that down here so we can see it. 3.76 times 10 to the fourth power kilomoles. Okay, so that's it for number 9. Number 10 is actually an easier problem. How many sig figs are in the numbers? So I'm just going to write the number of sig figs. I'm not going to rewrite the numbers. So the 9 and the 6 are both significant. So for A, we have two sig figs. For B, the 2 and the 9 are significant, and the 0 is sandwiched, so I have three sig figs for B. C also has three sig figs. D has three significant figures. And E, man, three again. Three sig figs, the three, the seven, and the six. F, 4.51 is significant. The times 10 to the seventh is just telling us all of the zeros that come after, and they're not following a decimal technically if we took it out. So if we take this number out of scientific notation, we would move the decimal seven places to the right. Four, five, one, um, with one, two, three, four, five zeros. None of these are following a decimal, so this is the number in standard notation. So the only significant figures are the 4, the 5, and the 1. So F has three sig figs. G is kind of tricky. Um, so we're going to ignore the 10 again, just like we ignored it for F. And we're going to look at how many sig figs are in this. They have specifically kept these trailing zeros here for a reason. So the 1 is significant. These are trailing zeros. They are after a decimal. So G also has three sig figs in it. Okay, and last, H, same thing, the 10 to the 10th does not count for significant figures, so the 3, 7, and the 6 are the only ones, so it has three sig figs. Okay, number 11, if the class average of the density of aluminum was found to be 2.95 and the accepted value is 2.7, what is the percent error? Okay, so I messed this up in one of the periods, so I'm going to Google the equation for percent error so I can show you guys. Percent error formula. Okay, so it is the um, VA, the actual value that you got, minus the ex expected. I don't like the word expected we use the word accepted value, which we could think of as being the correct value, um, but they don't say correct because in science, you know, we can always prove people wrong with our um, testing of the hypothesis. So we have our actual minus the accepted over the accepted times 100. So that would look like, let me show you, number 11 would look like percent error equals the value that we actually found, so 2.95 minus the accepted value of 2.70 divided by the accepted value, 2.70 times 100, and that's how we're going to calculate. So this is the difference from what we got and what we should have got. We divide it by what we should have got. Okay, and... Let's do that math. So we have 2.95 minus 2.7 equals, so we were off by 0.25, divide it by what we should have got, 2.7 equals, and multiply by 100. And we get 9.26. As our percent error and anything in our high school chemistry lab less than 10% I say is pretty acceptable. Okay, all right. In an experiment you determine the density of oak to be 0.765. This is number 12. Um, 0.766 and 0.768 in three trials. If the correct density is 0.866 are your results precise? Are these measurements close together. 
I would say yes, these two are within 0 0.001 of each other. So based on the magnitude of 0.766 and 0.765, these two are very close. And this one is also pretty close to these values. Okay, so these are all measurements that are close together. So we would say, yes, they are precise. Now, are they accurate? If you're getting 0.765, we could calculate the percent error. But from 0.7 to 0.8, um, we're off by 0.1. So that's a pretty big percentage to be wrong. So I would say no, they're not accurate. Okay, so it's not accurate because it's not close to the correct value, but they are precise because they are close together. Okay, and look at that. Determine the percent error using the uh, value of 0.765. So number 13, very similar to number 11, find the percent error. So we're going to take that 0.765 value and subtract what we should have got, 0.866, divide it by what we should have got, 0.866, times 100, and let's see what our percent error is. Um, did I close my calculator? Yes, I did. Okay. 0.765 minus 0.866 equals, so we're off by negative 0.1, divided by 0.866 equals times 100. So an error of negative 11 point, um, I'm going to round that to 66 percent is a pretty big error, 11%. So I know I said nine was pretty good, less than 10 is pretty good. This is not less than 10. So I would still stick with my answer of this not being accurate. Okay, number 14, what are the three rules for determining sig figs? You guys look those up in your notes. Um, if it's not a zero, if it's a zero that's sandwiched between two sig figs, and if it's trailing and after a decimal, it is significant. Make sure you know those rules. Number 15, Write the following numbers in scientific notation. Let's put those in scientific notation for number 15. I have six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, looks like six zeros. And that would equal, move the decimal all the way over between the six and the seven, 6.78. And then how many places do we move it? Three, six, seven, eight places times 10 to the eighth power. How did I know it's a positive eight and not a negative eight? If I take 6.78 and I multiply it, this number is 10 to the sixth is a million. So 10 to the eighth would be a hundred million. So 6.78 times a hundred million, yeah, I'm gonna get this really big number of 678 million. Okay, um, what about 0.00? .00 zero five four one move the decimal to the right this time so this is a small tiny number i'd get 5.41 times 10 how many places did we move it three four four i almost said five and because it's a small number it's a negative exponent so what this is really saying is i have 5.41 divided by 10 to the fourth power Okay, so I'm dividing it. I'm moving the decimal to the left. And then I have 98000. Zero, zero, zero. Move the decimal between the 9 and the 8 times 10 to the fourth power. And 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I'm going to move the decimal all the way over between the 2 and the 3. And I'm going to keep this last zero because that zero is significant. It's trailing. It's on the right side of the three, and it's after a decimal. Times 10 to the negative, because it's a tiny number, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and then I believe the next one says 400, which is 4 times 10 to the second power. 4 times 100 is 400. Last but not least, 0 0.200. We move the decimal over just one place 
2 times 10 to the negative 1, or 2 divided by 10, and 2 tenths is going to be 0.2. All right, that's it for the practice test. Make sure you study, study, study. Um, do all the practice problems that you can, especially if you know you're struggling in an area. Um, there's plenty of review to find on the internet, or you can email me for more practice as well. Have a great day.